Friends, in just a few moments, we are going to begin the funeral services for Colton Ross Wexler. Officiating today's services will be Rabbi Wendy Geffen from North Shore Congregation Israel. And before we bring the family in, we would just ask for everyone to please take a moment to take a few moments and make sure that your cell phone is turned off or set to the silent mode. Thank you.
This is an excerpt from a song by Bruce Springsteen called You're Missing. Coffee cups on the counter, jackets on the chair, papers on the doorstep, you're not there. Everything is everything. Everything is everything but you're missing. Pictures on the nightstand, TVs on in the den. Your house is waiting for you to walk in, but you're missing. You're missing when we shut out the lights. You're missing when we close our eyes. You're missing when we see the sunrise. You're missing. Is there a sorrow greater than this? Death has taken our beloved coal, and we feel that we cannot go on. Where is our consolation? There are no words that can ease the grip of this nightmare. There is only the offering of quiet presence to wrap around Cole's family, to soften the cold ground upon which they now walk. For those who love Cole's family, we pray together that our presence can hold them up. Let their tears fall on us, let their anger break against us. Let our love and our deeds be the words that speak for us. Let me be clear. We are not here to somehow try to find a silver lining in the deep, suffocating clouds that fill this space. We are here to mourn and to grieve for a life lost too soon for all the things that by rights should have been. Beth and Michael have lost their son. Cameron and Miles have lost their brother. Fran has lost her grandson. Doug and Michelle, Rich, Mora and Michael have lost their nephew. Madeline Lee, Samantha, Maddie, Natalie, Zach, Lindsay, and Gray have lost their cousin, and countless many have lost their friend. And in that, there is quite frankly enough pain and despair that we risk understanding Cole's life only as one defined by his death, and not for the fullness of the person he was. And so too are we here then to strive today to remember Cole for all of who he was. Everything said or sung this afternoon is intended to do just that, to pay tribute to Cole for the life he lived and the way he lived it for the time he was with us. 24 years is not long enough. It never will be. But Cole's 24 years, they were filled with life. And we owe it to him and to his family to be carriers of both the memories and the legacy he's now left behind for us all. A song of grieving based on the 23rd Psalm by Joe Black. Those who walk through the valley of shadows wear no shoes. Their feet are cut and torn as they stumble through the darkness. With no time to pack a bag or say goodbye, they begin their journeys unprepared. 
Some are dressed in finery, others in work clothes, some clutch briefcases, blankets, or teddy bears. And everyone wears their grief. Sometimes they march in silence, other times their voices echo to the very vaults of eternity. The river that created this place does not flow from on high. It was formed and filled by the tears of those whose bruised souls traversed the trail. But no one walks here alone. Stumbling pilgrims are quickly caught and held aloft by those who travel beside them. They are carried through brambles and branches that add to the chaos. Hi, Cole. Did he put a whoopee cushion here for me? <laughs> Which, if you knew Cole in Hebrew school, would not have been surprising. <laughs> Maybe I'll get on with it to something a little more uplifting. <laughs> So we'll offer an excerpt from a piece that Cole loved from Shel Silverstein's The Giving Tree. It was his favorite childhood book. He had its iconic image tattooed on his arm. And it seemed fitting that we offer that book's final words. After a long time, the boy came back again. I'm sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You can't swing on them. I'm too old to swing on branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I'm too tired to climb, said the boy. I'm sorry, sighed the tree. I wish I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I am sorry. I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am tired. Well, said the tree, an old stump is a good place for sitting and resting. Come. Sit, sit down and rest. Let me take you down Cause I'm going to Strawberry fields Nothing is real And nothing to get hung about Strawberry fields forever Living is easy with eyes closed Misunderstanding all you see It's getting hard to be someone But it all works out It doesn't matter much to me Let me take you down Cause I'm going to Strawberry field Nothing is real And nothing to get hung about Strawberry fields forever No one is thinking it's in my tree I mean I must be high or low That is you can't, you know, tune in but it's alright that is, I think it's not too bad Let me take you down Cause I'm going to Strawberry fields 
Nothing is real And nothing to get hung about Strawberry fields forever Always know something that think it's me But you know I know that it's a dream I think I know, I mean, oh yes, but it's all wrong That is, I think I disagree Let me take you down Cause I'm going to Strawberry fields Nothing is real And nothing to get hung about Strawberry fields forever Strawberry fields forever Strawberry fields forever Colton Ross Wexler was born on October 21st, 1998, the first of Beth and Michael's three children, weighing in at nearly 10 full pounds. From the time he was a toddler, he stood out, and he marched to the beat of his own drummer. This was evidenced in countless ways early on, whether it be at his my gym class when Cole refused to sit still or in Beth's lap and instead chose to stand in the middle of the circle and dance. Or to how his favorite childhood toy was not the conventional Lego set, but rather the water hose in the backyard. Cole's independent spirit was manifest early on too in his singing of Britney Spears songs always wearing a Spider-Man costume, or even his hip-hop dancing when he performed at Great America while barely in elementary school. Cole loved Camp Horseshoe. He was well-liked and respected by fellow campers and counselors alike, and he was a winner of the Golden Horseshoe Award. He did have one complaint after that first summer, noting that camp was awesome, but it was no Four Seasons. <laughs> Specifically, the mattress situation was not acceptable, <laughs> and something had to be done about the state of the toilet paper. This catalyzed Cole also being recognized forevermore as the possessor of the very best bed at camp because he now had a topper, not to mention the fact that he would from then on bring his own Charmin Ultra Soft. <laughs> Horseshoe also introduced Cole early on to a person who would become an incredible mentor and role model for him, Kevin Kaminsky. Kevin looked out for Cole. Cole eventually worked for Kevin at FSA and Highwood All-Stars, where so many kids came to know and look up to Cole, just as he did to Kevin. As we all know, Cole was always known for his athleticism, aggressive, not afraid to be physical. He was great at any sport he played. And this was noteworthy, perhaps, considering that Cole was also notably accident-prone and clumsy on the home front at the same time. And while he was probably best or more commonly known as an athlete, the truth is Cole had an expressive, artistic soul. He had a passion for music always. He played guitar, taking lessons since he was six or seven. He fell in love with music, anything and every part of it. He liked so many different kinds of it. He especially bonded with Maddie and Sam as they were singers, songwriters too. He made playlists. He loved going to concerts. He was the DJ at every party. He was talented and creative and he really enjoyed expressing himself that way. 
He was a showman from his epic impression performance of Mr. Minical back in eighth grade. Raise your hand if you saw that. Or his best smile superlatives video along the same lines. To his love for fashion, his obsession with hats and shoes, and not just being on trend, but setting the trend. He was an early adopter of skinny pants long before they were popular. And sometimes he wasn't anywhere near the trend and he didn't care one bit. Enter his experimentation with frosty tips, mustaches, or mullets of late. We all know Cole was incredibly intelligent the kind of smarts where he never had to try, and he still got an A. School came easy for him, and he could be a little mischievous too in more formal environments, from interrupting class to talk on a phone made out of his Ugg shoe, to any one of his epic places here at North Shore Congregation Israel, I'll highlight the time he was pulled out of his Hebrew school class entirely still in his desk. Like, but he could be serious when he needed to be. There was nothing that Cole wanted more than to go to USC for the professional programs it offered, but also because he wanted to get out into the bigger, wider world. And California seemed pretty great. When Michael got the email that Cole got in while Cole and Beth were away on Cole's senior year spring break trip, Beth got the word, came banging on Cole's hotel room right in the middle of the night, sharing that he had gotten in. When they opened the door and Beth told Cole, his friends literally lifted him up in the air, cheering for him. They were all so proud and knew what it meant. Cole was the type of person to whom people were just drawn. He was magnetic. He had so many friends throughout his life who meant so much to him. His dear first friends here in Highland Park, whom he met on the first day of third grade and who eased his nervousness and made him feel at home. All of his friends have always had a special place in Cole's life and in his heart, whether they be through school, teams, camp, USC, AEPI, everyone meant so much to him. Cole was a person who noticed other people and he was sensitive especially to how people treated one another. And he was never afraid to call someone out or stand up for someone who needed it. And he was firm in his convictions in this way and so many others. Cole was curious about the world. He enjoyed the finer things in life, but he had always been shown by his parents that to get the finer things, you have to work for them. After graduating in 2021 with a double major in business in the music industry, Cole set out to start his own business in NFT consulting. Again, very much ahead of everyone else, Cole saw a future in NFTs and was passionate about them. Frankly, when many people still don't understand what they are, he was a hustler, a connector, and his passion for what he was doing and its potential was gaining traction every day. But through it all, the most important thing, of course, in Cole's life was family. Always family. We'll hear from many of those family members in a few moments. The thing was, Cole was Cole with his family. He shared himself with them openly. They saw him and knew him for the fullness of who he was. Cole loved his cousins, his aunts, and his uncles deeply, including his uncle Jerry of blessed memory. He was close with his grandma, Fran, who was so excited for the moment Cole was born to have a boy, and a boy who would look just like her nonetheless. Rich is with Fran in Florida right now to make sure that she was not alone this day, and they are here watching on the stream. Cole was an incredibly protective older brother to both Cammie and to Miles. With Cammie and Cole being closer in age, Cammie was always there for Cole. She saw it all. And things weren't always easy. 
but God forbid someone tried to come on to Cami, whether it be a student at HPHS, a creepy guy on vacation, Cole was there and he wasn't having any of that. And Cole and Miles shared such a special relationship. Miles looked up to Cole, but Cole looked up to Miles. He would say that Miles was the better version of himself. And no matter what, they loved spending time together. Cole had incredible relationships with his dad and his mom individually and together. They loved Cole unconditionally and immensely. And Cole shared anything and everything, truly everything with them. And there's nothing that Beth and Michael wouldn't have done for him. Cole loved them all. And he was loved by them all. His life was full of promise and potential, which makes the fact that we are here today mourning for him all the more cruel. Cole did not want to die. His family wants everyone to know that and to be clear. He made one poor decision, something he knew, acknowledged, and committed to never do again. And it didn't matter. Cole is gone. Even having every answer won't bring him back to us. We will remember Cole for all of whom he was, for his energy, his charisma, his confidence, his mind, his heart, his passion, his talents, for the music he loved to listen to and play and sing, for his performance, for his humor, his convictions, his unique view of the world, and for so much more that will always be his legacy. But we will always mourn for all that was and will not be. The music has stopped. And he is gone far too soon. Colton Ross Wexler will be desperately missed forever. We'll hear now from those who loved Cole most. I'm going to invite Beth and Michael to come forward. Okay, I gotta start with it to be funny because I wore high heels. <laughs> Even though they kill. <laughs> I'm changing into flats later. <sighs> I want my last image of Cole to be him walking into the turquoise water with Miles at the start of our recent vacation to Turks and Caicos a few weeks ago. I want my last memory to be a tic-tac of our family made with a fit check where Cami was in charge of analyzing our outfits, getting ready for dinner on a family vacation. It's never going to be the same. It was always a huge event with all of us questioning our outfits like anyone gave a shit. <laughs> Sorry, I'm swearing in temple, I don't care. <laughs> the kids would be blasting music to get the mood going, and then I would take pictures and selfies to the point that everyone became annoyed with me. I would always need to capture every moment. That's how proud and in love I am with my family. 
whoever truly knew Cole knows he could be called a lot of things, but never boring or dull. He was the life of the party, the one that everyone gravitated towards, the one with deep thoughts, the one that would try and convince us of his conspiracy theories. And his opinions were obviously the only accurate ones. He loved playing devil's advocate. He could have been a lawyer, but he was way too creative. Cole was an underground genius. He got his brains from this one, not from me. But the personality was from me. <laughs> I never was able to help him with the homework. Not even in kindergarten. <laughs> Cole loved music, NFTs, his friends from childhood his A-Pi fraternity brothers from USC, he would say, would speak to him on a different intellectual level that he just could talk deep with them. And he really loved that. And his family more than anything. He loved Camp Horseshoe. He loved being a counselor at FSA. He loved baseball hats, but not boring ones. His LA style of fashion, he loved girls. He loved girls. He loved girls. And he loved his tattoos. I cried at the first tattoo. I yelled, I cried, and now I ended up starting to love them. They were all sweet tattoos. They weren't, they were just sweet. He got a crazy one that I saw in a picture he didn't even tell, he never would tell me, and it was this big mouse on his arm. It was Jerry the mouse from Tom and Jerry. And I freaked out, I'm like, why did you get a mouse on your arm? And he said it was for his uncle Jerry. <sighs> he loved sports. Growing up, he played basketball and lacrosse. He was really aggressive. He loved his new membership to Equinox. He didn't quite know how to flirt with girls there, though. He asked for my advice. And his new skill of snowboarding in Big Sky. His favorite thing in the world that helped him escape life was fly fishing with Michael and his uncle Michael. He loved deep thinking, watching endless movies and TV shows traveling, long showers, crazy haircuts to annoy us, adult cartoons, his dog Chance and Mac were his main reason to come home after college, and they were both named after rappers. Mac was going to be his first dog's name, and Michael didn't like the dog name Cuddy after Kid Cuddy, so he ended up letting Michael get use the word Mac, and now he won't ever have his own dog. He did babysit a dog in LA named Freddy that he worshiped. He loved collecting modern street style art as an adult. He recently spoke to the actual Banksy on the phone. No one has talked to Banksy on the phone. I don't even know how he got on a call with him. But he did, and it wasn't a fake one, it was the real one. He loved video games as a kid. Where am I? I don't know where I am. He loved good food. He loved eating sashimi with me. He loved sugarfish when I would come to LA. He loved perfecting espresso martinis cooking steaks on the cast iron with rosemary, garlic, and olive oil and butter. He loved deep conversations and hated people that just did small talk. He never felt the need to conform to being normal. He loved Thanksgiving. It was his absolute favorite holiday. 
The Wexlers are known for our Thanksgiving celebrations with karaoke, magicians, after parties. Cole was always the leader of his friends, and every teacher and coach would make a point to tell me that. Email me, call me. He was an athlete, he was an actor, he was a comedian, he was a musician. Is this the next page? I thank God that he got to travel to Europe this summer with his LA buddies. We had the best time. I thank God we went to a safari together in South Africa and Dubai for Miles' bar mitzvah. He chose not to have a party and to give his brother and sister this special trip that we'll never forget. We went to Hawaii, most recently Turks. Marco Island was a constant for us. It was his happy place until Big Sky came along. Montana was his favorite place on earth. He would bring his college friends to Big Sky and they would have Michael cook them steaks. I'm sorry that his high school friends never made it there, but they'll come with me. He also loved LA. It was completely his vibe. He loved surfing. He loved concerts. He loved watching sports with his friends. He just liked to chill. When I found out Colt passed away, I started to scream on the top of my lungs. Our best friends live in California, Liz and David, and they got the unfortunate call to help and to run over to his apartment with the police. We had talked to him the night before as his friends had called us to tell us he had slipped and he didn't look right. Michael had just had a colonoscopy, sorry to talk about that. And the following morning, he was about to hop on a plane to LA to come to Cole's rescue. But, Cole, but Michael got in a major three car collision car accident. And thank God he wasn't hurt, but his car got wrecked and we had to regroup and deal with that. We texted Cole nonstop throughout the day. And when he didn't respond to Michael getting in a car accident, I knew something was seriously wrong. Michael was about to hop on the plane. We were on our way to the airport, but it was too late. He was gone. Cole was on a great path in life. He was working. He started his own FT, NFT company. He texted me this last week. He had a partner named Jessica. Good presentation for Travis Scott's team, Mom. Jessica getting me visuals and graphics for it. Meeting busy Travis Bark, not Barker, Travis Scott. Scott's team at the Brightly early Monday. Andrew Schultz, manager meeting being scheduled. Talked to team over at Helix Records today and they were impressed on the call. And this guy has a ticketing NFT platform and he had already done a case study in Berlin with it and it's fully functional. So he wants to now talk with me privately because I will maybe partner with them and my company to do Travis Scott's NFT tickets. A bunch of crazy stuff the past two days. I've been moving a million miles a minute. I woke up at 6 a.m. today, just showered and meditated. I'm becoming more like my dad. Cole texted us the night before he passed away, and I'll share a portion of his text to us. I know this is personal, but I want everybody to know. Look, I'm sorry that I fucked around and slipped. I'm not turning back to drugs. That's not something I ever want again personally. Please know I'm all good and I appreciate that others are concerned. I love you guys and I'm sorry for scaring you. I have too many important things going on right now and I must be sober so I can work hard and be on point. I am working super hard and decided to indulge, I guess since some others were. I'm sorry. I was starting a 30-day challenge with my friends for everything. 
the way our relationship, especially with dad, has been so good these last years is because of my transparency and honesty. If I do anything bad this week or month, I will come home. Taking the day to decompress because I'm all worked up now. But I love you guys and I promise Emma, instead of I'm going to, it's I'm gonna make you all proud. <sighs> Michael replied to Cole, do nothing bad. Work on your career, work out, work on yourself. You are lucky to have friends that care enough to do something, whether you agree with their perception of the situation or not. I love you, Colton Ross Wexler. We will never be the same, but I will try my best as I know that's what you would want for Cammie and Miles. I wish I could swear in Temple right now and say horrible words because I like to swear. But for now, I will sit down and try to remain calm. Cole would want to be remembered laughing with a big smile on his face. He wouldn't want people coming up to me today and saying I'm sorry and being depressed for me. He knows I don't love hugs. He just would, he knows that I'm going to want my space. We buried him with his favorite hat, his favorite t-shirt that said love, that Cammie and him got together in LA at a pop-up shop with the pop-up famous designer, I don't know, rapper, whoever. His favorite black joggers and a funky pair of tie-dye high, high tops. And he did, we, have, we gave him one little necklace, but we, we all, Miles and I and Cammie took all the rest of the jewelry. I'm wearing one right now. He had funky jewelry. Uh, where am I? That's what he would have wanted. He will never leave my mind for a single second, every day for the rest of my life. My family knows I do this really, really weird thing when I take a shower every morning. And I think it was partially because I always worried about cold, where I draw contiguous hearts in the shower. One for each member of my family and two for the dogs on the glass door. And after I do that, I say, let the light shine down on my family. Please rest easy now, my baby boy. I lost my baby boy. I'm broken. I'm crushed. Life will never be the same. I live for my family, especially my children. It's my job to protect them, to support them, to encourage them, and yet the feeling today is failure, whether real or not. This baby boy was born with big brown eyes with crazy long eyelashes, eyes that showed emotion, determination, empathy, and laughter. I held him in my arms that day at the hospital, and I made a pledge that I would take a bullet so this child might live. I would trade places today with my baby boy in an instant. From birth, we were inseparable, taking my baby boy around the city. He was a city boy, playgrounds, water parks, take him to Elmo shows, kids museums, Spider-Man movies, calling a ticket broker to scalp tickets to the Wiggles. <laughs> the ticket broker laughed at me, but I got the tickets. <laughs> Took him to so many Bulls games. He loved basketball. We went to dozens of games together, and he took all of his friends. We went to story times and more. I schlepped my baby boy everywhere. No schedule is too tight or too demanding to make sure I was always home for every activity for all my kids. 
wake up at 3 a.m., catch a 5 a.m. flight back in time for all the kids was no problem. Work all night to be free the next day, no problem. Pack a cooler with sandwiches, chips, drinks, and spend the weekend running around to basketball tournaments everywhere. We lived in the city near the Merchandise Mart. I worked downtown. One day I received a frantic call from our nanny saying my baby boy is trapped in his crib. His leg was trapped in the slats on the side of the crib. I said, call the fire department, paramedics, police, send the troops. I ran across the loop to our house in a suit to save my baby boy. As I ran up, the fire department was leaving our house and waving me down to slow down. They said, my baby boy is fine. They said, we got there, we asked him his name as they spread the slats apart to free him, and he said, me llamo es Cole. <laughs> my baby boy it's wouldn't. Because of Sandra. <laughs> my baby boy wouldn't go to sleep at night when he got a big boy mattress on the floor unless I laid down next to him and told him wild stories about Super Cole and heroes and kings in far off imaginary lands. And when I thought he was asleep, I tried to slide off the mattress and I would hear this little voice Where are you going? Even before he was born, Beth and I were walking downtown and we went by a children's store and I saw a yellow dog in the window with a brown nose and a brown spot. And Cole wouldn't be born for at least another six months and I said, I need to have that for my baby boy. My baby boy slept with Spot and dragged him around the house everywhere, even at 3 a.m. when he would get out of his bed, Spot in one hand, a pillow in the other, and he would come in our bedroom, throw Spot up on the bed, throw his pillow on the bed, dive into our bed, and sleep with his knees in my gut. I thought Spot would be a problem when he decided that he should go to summer camp. My baby boy attended a city summer camp, and at seven years of age, he came home one day, and he said, next summer, I'm going to horseshoe over night camp. I said, do you know what that is? He said, sure, Dad, it's like a sleepover, only just longer. He was independent. I said, what about Spot? What are you gonna do at camp with Spot? He said, I'll put him under my pillow. And I said, when the other kids make fun of you? And he said, Dad, we all have them. We just don't talk about it. <laughs> I wasn't gonna send my baby boy to a camp far away that I had not seen, so I took him to his first father-son weekend at camp, which is the weekend before the camp starts on Monday. This continued until Miles was four or five, and he started attending also. So we began what is a 15-year journey at Horseshoe, attending father-son with my boys. They loved the go-karts, white stag, ice cream. Cole loved playing guitar in the cabin at night, making up songs about the kids and their dads, and not a clean word in the bunch. One year, I was um, on a trial, and I couldn't stay for the whole father-son, and my baby boy was at USC, and he flew in, and when I had to leave, he stayed the extra day with Miles to get Miles set up for camp. He loved his little brother so much, and he loved Cammy, and as you heard, he's highly, highly protective of her. They would argue their different political views and discuss music, pop culture, jewelry, and clothes. He's exactly what you'd want in a big brother, a little progressive, but exactly what you want in a big brother. He demonstrated his fashion forwardness, with pink pants, green pants, and other colors. And of course, no outfit was ever complete without his hats. Loved his hats. And he was a bit of a crazy kid. He would come up with crazy things to do, menthos in bottles of Coca-Cola in the backyard. One night we came home and his friends were in the backyard in the dead of winter. They were all in boxer shorts. And they were sitting on a chair with a giant bucket of ice and water and timing each other how long they could last in the ice water. And, as some of you won't forget, boxing night at our house, and I'll just drop it at that. That was really dangerous. <laughs> at, at times in high school and in early college, I had to be a parent to him, not a friend. And that was tough at times, but the last several years, my baby boy said, Dad, you always have my back. Our relationship is great. I know that. That gives me great comfort. Now my boy was a became a business confidant. Early on, he demonstrated his business prowess by having me drag him around Chicago to crazy places, 
really crazy places to trade gym shoes. Our relationship grew when we started fishing together in Montana several times a year. We built a home there, which he loved. He always said if he didn't make it in the business world, he'd be a fly fishing guide in Montana, and he'd be perfectly happy. We had so many memories catching rainbow trout, cooking dares together. He was a huge foodie and discussing his creative ideas. This summer, we went to the rodeo in Big Sky in true to form. He wore a flannel shirt, a cowboy hat, had a mustache, and he mingled with the real cowboys. He was at home there and with people of all walks of life. He was wicked smart, opinionated, and always a dreamer of new business ventures. The last couple of years, he shared ideas and discussed business ideas. And the meetings he took each day with NFTs, Web3, music collaborations. He knew his stuff. I didn't know what he was talking about. We talked and texted virtually every day about his excitement and new opportunities. The last several months were fantastic. We had some of our best fly fishing in October that we ever had. Thanksgiving was fantastic. We had an open spot this year, and one of his best friends and his parents, the dolls, they all came to our house for Thanksgiving. It was about 25 people every year. It's a tough ticket to get. But this year, we had, he sang songs. Uh, Cole broke out his guitar and started singing, uh, I think it's Luke Bryant or no. Waylon. Uh, no. He started singing Luke and Bach Texas songs, making martinis. We had a magic show, and it was always the food that he craved throughout the year. He said to me, this was the best Thanksgiving ever. We followed that up with a trip to Turks and Caicos, where he took his sister to the casino. He dropped $10 as they were walking out of the casino at the roulette table on Black 21, and he won $350 in an instant. He then helped his brother and sister dress up to look older so they could get into the casino when the whole family went. He lived life to the, foolish, to the fullest every day, yet unfinished. I miss my baby boy, taken too early with one stupid mistake with one night. While I relish the times we had together, it's not enough. The pain is unbearable. His future and our future destroyed. I love my baby boy, and we will join him one day at his side. Cammie and Miles. Family's all that matters. The song you and Miles sang to me at my bat mitzvah and an expression you lived by. You always put family first, and it was as simple as that. Our family will never be the same without you, but we will live by those words daily. I know you would have wanted us to make this speech funny, so we'll try our best, but we know that you will always be the funniest in the family. There was a time when I was around three years old and Cole sat me down in front of a computer and started recording. He started teaching me all the swear words he wanted me to know. <laughs> so, for the first word, he went, Miles, say boobies. So, in my little high-pitched voice, I yelled back, boobies. You can only imagine some of the other words that he got me to say. I wanted to do everything with Cole growing up, and any hobbies he picked up, so did I. He played all sorts of songs on guitar, and of course, so did I. He introduced me to video games, and we would play Call of Duty all the time together. He showed me new music constantly, and we both got into trading sports and Pokemon cards and made an Instagram account together. Cole actually molded me into liking the White Sox and the Packers, and given where we live, it was very out of the ordinary and disliked by everybody. Every summer, he went to Camp Horseshoe in Rylander, Wisconsin, and now it will be my eighth year there. I can go on and on, but the point is that Cole has influenced my life in so many ways. 
I always talked about my cool older brother who lived in LA and had a mullet. He took me to rap concerts, my first casino ever, and even read the girly books I was reading. He was one in a million and lit up every room he walked into. Cole always said he would get rich and buy mom, dad, and him matching yachts. We promised to work hard to try and make that wish of yours come true. I also promised to always protect Miles, just like you protected me my entire life. I promised to hug Chance and Mac tight and sneak them cheese sticks under the table. I promised to pop out and scare dad and try not to eat anything with truffles because you hated them. I will make outfit checks on TikTok with the family and root for USC even when they play Texas. Most importantly, I will live by everything you stood for. Cole was the person you always wanted to be around, especially somebody I always wanted to be around. I've looked up to him my whole life. He's rubbed off on me in both good and really bad ways, but I'm so incredibly thankful for him. These last few days have been very painful, but I know all the connections, funny memories, and times he's shared with us will last forever in our hearts. Cole. You had so much more life to live, and we miss you so much. Words cannot describe our infinite love for you and how much this breaks our hearts. Say hi to your best friend Jack and Uncle Jerry for us, and try to meet Mac Miller while you're at it. Maura and Michael. I am Cole's Uncle Michael. Michael Cole and I have a tradition of fly fishing together every October in Montana. Cole got into the sport seven or eight years ago, and as he did with all things, completely immersed himself in it. And he fly fished the same way he did everything else, with a great degree of confidence, and while taking instruction from the guys, he had his own style. Last October, Cole and I had a day. Not a cloud in the sky, we caught fish all day with his favorite guide and covered beautiful stretches in Yellowstone. I have so many pictures on my phone of Cole proudly holding up a fish. His joy was evident, and he always flashed his beautiful smile. Michael and I will fish together this October and in the years to come, but there will be a void. And as we fish the rivers that we fished with Cole, he'll be foremost in our thoughts, and I know we will feel his spirit. Which leaves me with the project. Miles has become an expert skier in a very short time. My work is to get Miles up the curve and fly fishing. Michael and I, and I are in need of a fishing buddy. Hi, I'm Auntie Mora. My beautiful nephew, Cole, looked just like my mom, Fran, and my sister, Beth. Just like Michael said, he had expressive big brown eyes with the longest eyelashes, curly brown hair, and an impish smile, and a lighthearted giggle that brightened any room he was in. He was a lover, a lover of family, a lover of friends, a lover of music, art, and fashion. He had a passion for life. Cole's senior year in high school, Beth and Michael took a vacation to Capri with all of Cole's best friend's parents. One rainy Friday night while my husband and I were already in bed, I received a call from Sandra. Sandra was hiding in the basement and whispered that Cole was having a party upstairs. <laughs> Living only a block away, I jumped out of my bed in my PJs a raincoat, and my rain boots. And I drove around the corner to Wake Robin Lane. Cars were parked up and down the street. As I opened the door to the Wexler's house, it was as if, it was as if I was in a John Hughes movie. 
I pushed my way in the dark through rowdy crowds of teens. I gathered Cole and his buddies together in a circle and gave them two choices. Either I call each of their parents in Italy and tell them about the party, or we agree to shut this party down and never mention it to their parents. And they wisely chose the second option. And we made sure that all the kids return safely home. Cole texted me the next morning saying how sorry he was. And it was our secret. And when Michael returned home the next week, he mentioned it was odd that one of the bathroom guest towels was missing and that it seems as if the couch had been moved based on a visible indentation in the carpet. <laughs> Covering up this party was no easy feat with the likes of Michael Wexler. <laughs> I will continue to honor my sweet nephew, Cole, by supporting Beth, Cami, Michael, and Miles. I will remind them that even though Cole is not physically here with us, he will forever be with us spiritually and in our memories. We will never let Cole's bright light dim. Our beautiful boy, with those big brown eyes and lashes, curly brown hair, impish smile, and silly giggle will forever be with us. We will honor Cole moving forward, doing exactly what he would want us to do, be there for each other, live life to the fullest, and to know that he will always be watching over us. Doug Michelle. Holidays were a big deal in the Wexler household on Wake Robin Lane. Best family had had a long and storied tradition of elaborate holiday celebrations. In fact, the first time that I attended a Coleman family Seder, I was told that we'd all be putting on a play later that evening. All of us, one with scripted lines and everything. There might have even been choreographed dance moves as well. It was really fun and it definitely got everyone into the holiday spirit. When Beth and Michael started their own family, they decided to carry on the tradition of making their own holiday celebrations memorable, meaningful, and festive, and to start a few traditions of their own, especially when it came to Thanksgiving. You need to understand that Thanksgiving at the Wexler household is truly a spectacular extravaganza without rival or parallel. Michael literally cooks for days. The feast is so bountiful that it can't be recorded on a video in a file size that's small enough to email the video needs to be texted or put into a Dropbox. But Thanksgiving wasn't just about the fantastic food. It was mostly about gathering together and enjoying each other's company and enjoying the assortment of amazing entertainment offerings that were carefully curated by Beth. Over the years, we were treated to musical performances by Cole, as well as mentalists, magicians, and team trivia competitions. A few years ago, Beth added karaoke to this entertainment lineup. It was a hit, and Cole was the hands-down MVP of karaoke. Cole was always one of the first singers to go up. He would perform songs from a variety of genres, ranging from pop to country and everything in between. Cole's vocal stylings were impressive, and his enthusiasm and exuberance were infectious. He inspired many an attendee to clap along, to sing along, or to finally grab a book with a list of songs, make a selection, and put their own name on the board. Cole was incredibly talented. And although he performed many a skillfully rendered solo, he was also a gracious participant in duets and group numbers that featured, shall we say, less qualified collaborators. Cole loved his family, he loved his friends, and he loved his music. You could see how happy he was during those karaoke sessions. As all of those elements came together at those cherished Thanksgiving celebrations, 
that were so thoughtfully and lovingly created by his parents. I will always be grateful for those Thanksgivings that I spent with Cole, watching him perform, talking about music, and catching up with him about his various projects in his life in Los Angeles. And I'm so thankful to Michael and Beth, whose valiant efforts made it possible for us to have those happy holiday memories with Cole. Cole's obituary said that we could buy an NFT with Ethereum in his honor. And I actually tried, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. But next time I'm somewhere where they have karaoke, I'm going to sing a song in honor of Cole, and I'll remember how much happiness he brought so many of us, how loved he was, and how much we're all going to miss him. I've been called a lot of names in my life, as you could all imagine. But the best name was when Cole called me Uncle Doug. He called me Uncle Doug for over 20 years, and even last week when I was helping him start his new company, the R3 brand, he said, thank you, Uncle Doug, for helping me. I'll always remember the various things that he wanted me to do with him. And I remember back to about 12 years ago, and my brother had picked up Xander, Logan, and Cole, probably from a bar mitzvah back then, and Cole wanted to go to Wiener Circle in downtown Chicago. And he asked Michael, can we go? Michael says, Cole, call your Uncle Doug. If he'll go, we could all go. <laughs> phone rings, Cole gets on the phone, Uncle Doug, my dad said, if, we can, if you'll go, he'll take us all down to Wiener Circle in Chicago. As I'm talking to Cole, I'm thinking to myself, there is no way my brother wants to go, and he wants me to tell Cole no. So of course, being a horrible uncle, I said, absolutely, tell your dad to pick me up in five minutes. <laughs> 10 seconds later, the phone rings, and Michael in his monotone voice says, are you serious? <laughs> so he picks me up, and we're going downtown to Wiener Circle, and I tell the boys to order something that's not on the menu. And about now, Michael is giving me that look of, you're not finishing that story in Temple, are you? <laughs> so no, I'm not going to. But suffice it to say, I will tell you that it was a memorable experience. And those of you who understand my reference understand that I got the boys a shake. <laughs> Last year, I was in LA. Um, with our daughter Natalie, and I called Cole and I said, do you want to go to dinner? And he said, sure, Uncle Doug, let's go. I said, how do I get to you? And he said, well, you got to take the PCH or the 405 or the SM BLVD to get to DTLA. I had no idea it was bilingual because I had no idea what he said. So I asked Siri, and Siri said that DTLA is downtown Los Angeles. Apparently PCH is Pacific Coast Highway. 405 is a highway, and SM BLVD is Santa Monica Boulevard. So off we went to a dinner. I picked him up. Who knew directions in LA were so confusing? And my daughter and I, we went uh, with Cole to a place outside the Staples Center, a sushi restaurant, and sat outside and listened to Cole's stories about LA. It was so obvious how much he loved his life in LA. He really, every story was better than the next. He was an LA person. He was no longer that little kid growing up in the Midwest, he fit in in LA like nobody else. You've heard a lot about karaoke. I got a confession to make. I cheated. I did the duets with Cole, so when my wife said somebody not qualified, that'd be me. Cole was the kid who could sing, dance, play the guitar. So when karaoke started, I either teamed up with Cole or Mora, that sister who could be a professional singer. The last Thanksgiving we were at, I sang uh, with Cole, Shallow, and he took Bradley Cooper's part, I took Lady Gaga's part. <laughs> to say that I'm horrible is an understatement of epic proportion. He was great, of course, and I remember afterwards, he said, Uncle Doug, I wouldn't quit your day job. <laughs> Truer words have never been spoken. I wish there was words today I could say to you guys to make this any better. This is a terrible, horrible tragedy. And there, aren't, there isn't enough time or words for me to describe the extraordinary life that Cole lived. He was a great son, a great cousin, a great grandson, a great brother, and a great friend. He's going to be sorely missed, and I know I have a rest of my lifetime to try to make some happiness for you on what is now the new normal for your family. So we're here today to say goodbye to Cole, 
He will never be forgotten. We'll always remember him in our hearts and in our minds. Goodbye, Cole. We love you. And last, we'll hear from Logan. So the story goes that in second grade, the Wexlers moved from the city to Highland Park. Cole was sitting alone on the first day of school, and I went over and asked him if he wanted to play football with me. He asked me to buy his NFT first, and the rest is history. <laughs> Cole is my best friend, my brother, and my smarter other half. I'm lucky to have spent my life growing up with Cole. Cole epitomized what it meant to be a leader. He was always the guy to know. The cool kids and the older guys all loved him, and he was kind enough to bring me along wherever he went. I always felt safe following Cole because I knew wherever he was going is where I wanted to be. We always had each other's backs. Cole, the selfless person he is, would go to any lengths to be there for his friends. Whether it was running Xander's presidential campaign or tallying my goals while he was injured during our senior lacrosse season, Cole was always there for the people he loved. Cole's passion is infectious. The most important endeavors in my life started because Cole introduced me to them. Basketball, cross, or an embarrassing catalog of rap albums spawning from the second grade until today. We burned CDs and passed them around our elementary school. I was frozen with embarrassment when he pulled up to school with our music. Every fiber of my being wanted to keep my bag zipped so I could destroy those CDs without anybody knowing about them. Instead, I looked over and saw that spark in Cole's eyes. That big, silly smile, and I learned that in this moment, his passion for life and spreading joy would drive Cole to do anything that he set his mind to. He started passing out our songs the moment we stepped in the door, and I think that we should all strive to have the courage of a second grade Cole. At the end of the day, Cole's the type of person who wants to create something and share it with the world. Luckily, the rap album never made it past Virginia Elementary School. However, Cole shared with me and most people in this room what it meant to lead with your heart. He shared his love for music, his style, his laughter, and his kindness. I'll carry that with me every day. Cole, not a day will go by without me expecting a phone call from you calling me easy deasy. I'm sorry we'll never be able to start our enterprise together. Whenever we talked about making it big, you promised that you would handle the business plan, finance, marketing, hiring, and I would have a special role of being the personality guy. <laughs> Not so sure what I would be doing, but if it was with you, then I was in. Mike and Beth, thank you for giving me my best friend and welcoming me into your family. Cammy and Miles, you guys are my family too, and I'll be with you here forever. Cole, I love you, and I know you'll be watching over me for the rest of my life. I'm lucky to call you my best friend. We thought it might be appropriate to conclude the spoken words offered about Cole today by seeing and hearing from Cole. Uh, and so we have two videos. Uh, both were mentioned in the words that were shared before. The first one is Cole and Miles at Kami's Bat Mitzvah singing their own rendition of Chance the Rapper's Family Matters. It's called Cami Matters. <laughs> And the second one is of Cole singing Looking Back Texas by Waylon Jennings, just an excerpt.
life we're living got us feeling like the Hatfields and the Croydons. Between a Williams Bain songs, Newberry Strain songs, and Blue Eyes crying in the rain. Would you please rise? El Malay Rachamim, Shulchain Bamromim, Hamitse Minuchan Echona, Tachat Kanafe Hashchina, in Kadoshimu to Horim Kazoar, Harakia Mazirim at Yaki Renu, Moshe Ben Michael David Ve Elisheva, Shelach Leolamo, Baal Harachamim, Yasterehu Beseter Kanafecha Leolamim, Vitor Bitora Chaim at Nishmato. Adonai hu nachalato, v'anuach v'shalom al mishkavo v'nomar, amen. May the source of all life, the fountain of all being, open our hearts to compassion and our eyes to wisdom, that we might glimpse in perfect peace and sadness the way of all things. May Colton Ross Wexler's memory always be for us a blessing. And may we never let the light of his love and his heart grow dim in ours. May we remember all his worthy and righteous deeds that his memory be forever bound up in the bond of life. May Cole's death awaken us to this truth, that the bond of love we shared and share can never be severed in sorrow. May he always rest in peace. We say together, Amen. Please be seated. Friends, this concludes the services here at the synagogue. The interment and burial services will continue at Memorial Park Cemetery. For those of you traveling with us to the cemetery and the funeral procession, please do keep the following safety precautions in mind. Please make sure that your bright headlights and your four-way hazard flashers are on at all times. Please be sure to obtain an orange funeral safety sticker for your windshield, and we will be providing several of the cars throughout the procession with a magnetic orange flag. Please travel as, as close as safety permits to the car in front of you to avoid any gaps in our procession. And for your own safety and security, please don't speak or text while driving to the cemetery in the funeral procession. The family has requested any memorial contributions in Cole's memory to either North Shore Congregation Israel or the Music Industry Program or Business School at the University of Southern California, or you could purchase an NFT in Cole's memory. Uh, especially with Ethereum. The following individuals have been asked to serve as pallbearers, Logan Dowell, Xander Echt, Samantha Sachs, Maddie Sachs, Zach Wexler, Natalie Wexler, Maura Sachs, Michael Kukanza, Doug Wexler, and Michelle Wexler. At this time, I would ask everyone to please rise and stand in place. I'm gonna ask the pallbearers to come forward to my right as we escort the family and the rabbi and the casket from the sanctuary. <laughs> 